Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sue Jacobs with American Trust Retirement. Linda Kirst is also with me. She's an education consultant with our retirement group. And we're here today to announce a lot of changes that are taking place with the Stonehill 401k plan. And the purpose of a lot of these changes is to just really help encourage people to save for retirement. Um, we are adding some new automatic features that are going to enroll people who are not currently participating, as well as do some small increases to those who are participating over time. And Linda's going to go through that in great detail. There are definitely ways, if it doesn't work for you, that you can get out. But we're going to show you how much those small changes can make when you just add a little bit more to your retirement account every year and make a big difference in the end. So um, in the envelopes that we had prepared, uh, we do have the general announcement of the, the big changes that we'll be going through with the automated features. Um, we also have a declination form. For those employees who are currently not participating at all, this is the form that you would fill out if you don't want to be um, involved in any part of the plan, whether it be auto-enrolled or escalated. This is the form that you would have to fill out. If you're currently in the plan, um, there's a different way that you can decline, and we'll go through those online options with you in the presentation. We also have a nice insert. Um, Linda's going to cover how to go on our website and make some of these changes that we go through. But in case um, you can't meet with us or you want to go through it at home, this nice insert will walk you through all the steps. We also have an SPD outline, which is just kind of a quick one-page snapshot of the main features of the plan. We also have our annual automatic enrollment notice. And some of these are just disclosures that are required to be sent to employees every year. So we wanted to include that in the package so everyone's aware that it is an automatic enrollment plan. And then the last item is called a summary of material modifications. And that is basically a summary of the items that were updated in your SPD. So when you first signed up for the plan, you had maybe gotten a thicker summary plan description that had every possible detail of the plan. This SMM is basically highlighting just the paragraphs that changed so that it's easily identifiable to you. So um, a lot of this will make more sense as we go through it, but I just wanted to explain what was in your packages. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Linda. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. I know I probably look familiar to some of you. I've been here with the benefit meetings, but I feel like I get about 10 minutes to squeeze in a half an hour of material. So today we've got that whole time frame and I'd be really, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Linda. I know you guys have worked all day, a lot of you, and so you're tired, but this information is good information. At the benefit meetings, you hear about health insurance, you hear about life insurance, and at the very end, a little bit about retirement. But I want you to know that your retirement plan is very important. All of you are working, working very hard in the hopes that someday you don't have to work. And if you don't think ahead, if you don't plan ahead, that is not going to be an option for a lot of people. Um, this retirement situation in America is almost in a crisis mode. People have not thought ahead. And right now we've got about 60% of American workers that have saved about $25,000 for retirement, not including their home. $25,000. When I think about living from age 65 to 95, 30 years, $25,000 isn't going to get you very far. The nice thing to know is that you do have a retirement plan. They have a very generous match, and they're adding some features to help you prepare. So I am, like I said, very excited to be here. Social Security is set to pay about 20% of what you need. So we all have to think and own the fact that that other 80% is really up to us. What I'd like to do today is a quick plan review, look at these new enhancements, then as long as I'm here, we'll go over the investment options again, and then we'll walk through this online so that you can actually see how to make these changes yourself. Sue handed out the summary plan description. This is a quick overview of your plan. You've all got this, but here are some of the highlights. First of all, who's eligible? 
anyone who has worked here 30 days at age 21 can start putting their own money into this plan. So you're eligible after 30 days. After you've been here 12 months and at least age 21, you're going to start being eligible for that company match as well. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. After you've met eligibility, it's the first day of the next month that you can start putting money in. Deferral limits, the IRS has set these quite high. So if you can, you can contribute a lot of money to a 401k. You can change your deferrals at any time. And this is a wonderful feature. A lot of plans are not this flexible. You're, you're locked in for six months or a year. Not so with this plan. You can change it at any time. Even if you get auto-enrolled at 3% and you're like, I can't do 3%, you can go online and change that at any time. Automatic deferrals for people who newly become eligible, you will be automatically enrolled at 3% of your compensation if you don't go in and change it to something else. A lot of this is not new. I uh, wanted to touch on the company match. There are a few changes here. Stonehill is matching half of what you put in up to your 6%. This is a fantastic benefit. Retirement experts are telling people you should be trying to put into your 401k between 10 and 15% of your pay. And I know that's hard to do, but if you put in six and Stonehill puts in another three, now you're at 9%. That is a fantastic benefit. If you walk into any financial advisor and say, can you give me your top 10 financial advice, one of those pieces is going to be try to put into your 401k at least as much as they're going to match. If you were to walk into a bank today and try to save money, what do you think your interest rate is going to be? 1%? 2%? They're going to be giving you a 50% return on your first 6%. Try to take advantage of this. I found out that the average contribution in the Stonehill plan is 3%. That's the automatic enrollment amount. Some of you got automatically enrolled and have never looked at it again. If that's the case, you're missing out on half of your company match. So I know maybe you can't jump up 3%, but you probably can jump up one or two, and we're going to help you with that with this auto escalation coming up as well. The money you put in is 100% yours. The company money, you get a little more vested in every year. After five years of working here, you are 100% vested. Um, the match, it used to be that every single paycheck, every time you put money in, the company match would also come in. This is going to change. Every single paycheck your money is going to go in, the company match now is going to wait. They're going to wait till the end of the plan year, which is June 30th, then calculate how much you put in and match it 50% of what you put in um, on that one day after June 30th. So it's going to be annually funded instead of every single paycheck. This means that if you are not employed here on June 30th, or if you have not worked a thousand hours that year, you would not be entitled to a match for that year. The nice thing about this is that this rewards the people who are here. So if you are someone who hasn't left employment during the year, or you put in a lot of hours, you're the ones that are going to be getting this match on June 30th. And what they hope to do after looking at this for maybe a year or two is if this has really helped them, <coughs> Uh, they may even try to increase that match amount over time. Um, so that is one change. The other thing is the 1,000 hours, if, um, because this is only done once a year, if you were to leave employment due to disability, death, or you, normal, you had a normal retirement during the year, you would still be entitled to get that company match on June 30th. Okay, any questions about that at all? Again, as we work with different plans, more and more companies aren't able to fund a match. So the fact that your company is still matching half of what you put in up to 6% is a great benefit. When does oh. this start? 
Um, July 1st. This will, July 1st. So after July 1st, you're not going to see that company match come in every paycheck. And so your first company match for the plan year, July 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2018, you'll probably see around August of 2018, after the testing is done, they'll put in a lump sum. But I'm retiring July 7th. July 7th, so you'll, uh, uh, you'll get that whole year's worth of, of this year? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it probably won't apply much to you because you'll only work a few days into the next year. Right. Yeah. Huh. Uh -huh. Any other questions about how that works? No. But again, take advantage of this batch and try to put in at least 6%. Auto enrollment, as of July 1st, the auto enrollment will be applied to the following employees. Existing and eligible employees with current salary deferral less than 3%. If you are currently doing 1% or 2% on July 1st, that is going to automatically be bumped up to 3%. Existing eligible employees who were previously declined participation, you will automatically be enrolled to 3%. New eligible employees who do not make a choice to decline or put in a higher amount will automatically be enrolled at 3%. Now here's the key to this all. None of this is locked in. You don't have to stay where you're automatically enrolled. At any time, you can go to our website and change that. So if you wanted to do 2%, you can log on to American Trust Retirement, change that to 1% or 2% at any time. I'm hoping you don't so you can get the match, but you can do that. You can call us. We're at the office from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'd be glad to make these changes for you. Sue and I are going to be around all day tomorrow. We can do this for you right here as well. Please note, if you are eligible but not currently participating, um, you will be automatically enrolled at 3%. If you choose to still decline, you have to fill out that page that we included in your packet. It was a declination page. Fill that out, turn it in, and we will make sure you don't get enrolled at 3% on July 1st. So you can do that. If you wish to enroll at a smaller amount, that would be done online. And here's the new feature that I'm, I'm most excited for. This is a feature called Auto Escalation that every single July 1st, your contributions will automatically be bumped up 1%. 1% every year until you reach 8%, and then that feature is going to turn off. This will be a combination of pre-tax and Roth, and then the pre-tax is going to bump up. I know to you, you're thinking, what, what does this do? But in America right now, this is a feature that plan participants are asking for. People who retire are saying this is what made the difference in their retirement plan. I just read a new study um, just this week. It's dated January of 2016. Uh, people under 30, 86% are favorable for this. People older than 30, 70% really want this feature in their plan. The reason for this is because even though people have a lot of good intentions, they say, you know what, um, I was auto enrolled at 3% and I'm not going to keep it there. I'm going to move it up every year. They don't. I don't know if it's because financial reasons, because you get busy, inertia, which means the tendency to do nothing if nothing changes, but half of your plan is still doing 3%. This is going to help you better prepare for retirement. So your deferral amount will be increased automatically 1% until you're contributing 8%. For all those contributing less than 8% on July 1st, it'll go up 1% and it'll continue every year. This program will apply to everyone contributing under the 8% unless you opt out. You can turn this feature off by going to the website and clicking a button. And again, we can help you with that. I'm going to walk you through how to do that. Here's what a difference a little change can do. Sarah and Nick both started contributing into their 401k at age 25. Nick did 4% his whole working career. Sure enough, he retired. He got a nice balance. He's got a quarter of a million dollars. 
But what Sarah did is she started at 4%, but increased it just 1% every year until she was at 15%. And look at the difference. That's a big difference. The beauty of this is that when you increase it 1%, you hardly notice the difference. Maybe you got a small raise, and this is just a small portion of your raise. Maybe um, people don't realize that a 1% change could be $6 every week out of your paycheck. How could you save $6? Maybe it's a cup of coffee. Maybe it's a lunch out. Maybe it's parking farther away so you don't have to pay the meter. Uh, a 1% change you'll hardly notice out of your paycheck, and yet very big results. I wanted to tell you that I used a 7% return in these figures, and people will say, well, my account hasn't earned 7%. If you look at the history of the stock market, starting at any date and going out 30 years, Starting at any date, going out 30 years, the average return has been 7%. Some years, really good, 2013, people were making 15, 20%. Last couple of years, maybe not so good, but the average has been 7%. And that's why I use these figures. I can't promise that's going to continue, but it's what the industry uses as a standard. I put in two examples of people so that I can show you what a difference from two to four and four to six makes. If we've got this 25-year-old earning 30,000 and she's putting in 2%, 2% is $12 a week. $12 a week, can you try to find $12 a week? It's 600 a year, and if she continued at that rate, she'd have 215,000. Well, increasing it by 2%, $23 a week, but yet by the time she retires, that's a big difference. And here's the 6% on the bottom. Challenge yourself. Can you do a little bit more? Here's the second fellow, 30 years old with a $40,000. That's $16 a week, $800 a year. And look at those numbers. This slide talks about the principle of starting early. Time has a lot to do with a retirement account. You start working when you're in your early 20s, you're going to retire in your mid-60s. That's a lot of years. If you're trying to put all this money away, it's going to be hard. But if you let time work for you, it can really pay off. Because in a 401k, your interest is earning interest is earning interest. And so there's a compounding effect. These two people put in the exact same dollar amount. They both put in, over their whole career, $43,200. This person started later. For whatever reason, they didn't start putting any money in until they were about 48. At 48, they suddenly said, oh my goodness, I'm going to retire soon. And they had to put in $200 a month. Sure enough, their $43,000 grew. They've got $93,000 to, re $93, to retire on. But this person thought ahead. At age 30, she started putting in $100 a month. She had to do a lesser amount for a longer time, and sure enough, more than doubled because time did that work for her. So that's why we say start early. Even if it's a little bit, let time work for you. I'm going to have to put in a little humor. Can you read it? Uh, we used up all of our retirement money. First the car retired, then our furnace retired, then our dishwasher retired. All right. Uh, before I move on to uh, regular plan details, anybody have any questions? Okay. We also get a tax benefit when you put money into a 401k. Your plan offers both the pre-tax and the Roth, and I know I've covered this in the past, but very quickly, so we'll walk through this again. Normally, when you think of a 401k, you are thinking of a traditional pre-tax 401k. You tell us a percentage, maybe it's 6%. We're going to take 6% out of every one of your paychecks out of your gross pre-tax money. That money goes into the 401k, and it does not count as taxable income to you. So it lowers your income, and at tax time, you get an immediate tax benefit. That money is invested year after year. It's compounding as you go. 
when you retire, you go to take out your money, and the IRS says, we want our taxes. So when you take this out, you will be taxed on not only what you put in, but all the earnings it's made as well. The theory is that once you're retired, you're not working, your income is low, your tax bracket is low, you would take this out at a lower retirement tax bracket. This is a great way to save. First of all, you get an immediate tax benefit. You are not taxed on anything until you retire, hopefully a lower retirement rate. You don't feel this as hard as you think because it is coming out of your gross paycheck. A dollar goes in, but you only feel your paycheck go down about 80 cents. And if something were to come up and you need to borrow or take a hardship, pre-tax money is available for both those things. Here's a quick illustration of the tax savings. If you were earning $35,000 and you put in $2,400, that would reduce your taxable income. This person saved $360, and that isn't even investment. That's just a tax savings. You also have the option to do Roth. And Roth is newer, so it's not as well understood. How this works is you tell us a percentage of your pay. Maybe it's 6% again, but we're going to take that 6% out of every one of your net paychecks. So you do pay taxes on it up front. There is no benefit to the Roth on the front end. But the IRS says if you can meet two criteria, you have to keep it in until you're 59 and a half, and you have to keep it in for at least five years. If you can meet both of those criteria, when you go to take out your Roth money, everything comes out tax-free. All the earnings you have made over the last 10, 20, 40 years is not taxed when you take it out of a qualified Roth. So this could be a huge benefit when you retire. Let's look at an illustration. If Mike's 35 and he's going to be contributing for another 30 years and retire at 65, let's assume he put in $1,000 a year of Roth, so $30,000 of Roth. Now he comes to retirement. That $30,000 has grown. It's now worth $120,000 you would take out that full $120,000 and pay zero taxes. The $90,000 of earnings will have come out tax-free. That is the benefit of a Roth. So again, an amazing option right within your 401k. Who is really going to benefit from that Roth? Young people. People who have a long time horizon. If you've got 30, 40 years to invest this, you're going to have a lot of earnings in there. Roth might be a good option for you. People who are in a low tax bracket, if you're in a 15% tax bracket, lock that in. Who knows what taxes are going to be at retirement? Maybe they'll be much higher. If you're in a low tax bracket, Roth might be a good option for you. Roth is good because it tax-free income at retirement. If you pass away and you have money left over and it's Roth, it'll roll to your beneficiaries. They take it out tax-free. So no matter how old you are or your income, Roth might be a good option. But the best reason I like Roth is this last one because it gives you a way to control your income once you're retired. If you have all pre-tax, every dollar you come out, you take out is taxable. But if you have pre-tax and Roth, you can take out pre-tax up to a point, stop, start taking out the Roth, and it won't move you into that next tax bracket because this doesn't come as income to you. Uh, so it gives you options at retirement. You can do all pre-tax into this 401k, you can do all Roth, or you can mix and match and do a little bit of both. The company will match either one up to 6%. Their money, their 3% that they put in is always pre-tax money. So if you have questions about this, sit down with Sue and I and we'll ask you some questions. Talk to your tax provider. They'll give you some options. I really like Roth. I was doing all Roth. And then when I got my taxes done, they said, you know you're not getting any tax benefit from this 401k. So I started to do some pre-tax to get some tax benefit now. So it's a good option. Any questions?
right. So we take that money out of your paycheck, whether it's pre-tax or Roth, and we invest it for you. We have three options now at American Trust. We used to have two, but just last year we introduced the third option, and I know I zipped through it very quickly. One option is for you to invest your own money using these 14 funds. Some people, this is what they love to do. Um, we offer a very conservative, stable value. Then there's some bond funds, large cap, mid cap, foreign stock. You can build your own portfolio and invest it that way. The other option is to say, you know what? I'm not a financial investment guy. I don't know how to pick and choose my own funds. I would like American Trust to help me. So we developed these five managed portfolios. These are based on risk tolerance. You tell us which one you want. Our team will build that portfolio, watch it on a monthly basis, tweak it for you. Um, so it's a nice way to still choose your portfolio, but we're doing the, the daily work. If you did this by age, the 20-year-olds would be aggressive. 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, those who are 60s and retired may be conservative. Age is not the only factor, and so I don't want to say you have to be that way, but that's how we normally look at it. When you are young and you are not going to use this money or take it out of this account for a long time, you can afford to be risky a lot more stock, a lot more foreign stock to get that account growing and, and multiplying. Of course, if it goes down, it goes down too. Your account will drop a lot too, but you have a long time frame to recover any losses. So the younger you are, the more aggressive. But let's say you've worked your whole life. You've finally got a nice balance in here. You don't want to be investing in stock where it could lose it in the next week. So you switch to more conservative, more bonds, more cash to start preserving that balance. We used to charge for these portfolios. The charge for Stonehill was 0.2% a year to use our managed portfolios. Last year we got rid of that fee. So if this is the best option for you, there is no additional fee to use these managed portfolios. Um, last year we introduced a third option the third option uses two things. It uses this tactical model and our blueprint. And I'll explain these a little bit more in detail. This American Trust blueprint is something we mail to you every December. This is a progress report. This is a fantastic tool. I think it goes unnoticed a lot of time, but we know a lot about you. We know your age, your balance, what you're putting in. We know the company match. We know how you have it invested. We take all that information, forecast out into the future, and say, if you don't make any changes, is this going to replace, is your retirement account going to replace your current income for 30 years after you've retired? Is it going to be enough? If the answer is yes, this will show 100% and we'll say, keep it going, you're doing great. But if the answer is no, it's going to tell you how short you're going to be every month and then give you hints of what you can do now to make that future look better. So it is a really nice tool. Some of the feedback we got was that it wasn't, um, it didn't know the whole story. The blueprint only knows about your 401k with American Trust. It doesn't know if you have an IRA that's got $3,000 in it. It doesn't know if your spouse works for John Deere and is going to be getting a pension after they retire. You can now add all that other information, fill out um, a form that we have, a customize your blueprint. I brought plenty of these along. Tell us this other information so that when we do run this, it is a good picture of your family situation. This is something I would want to know. Am I going to have enough? You can also change all the measurements. If you don't want to retire at 67, you'd like us to run this at 62 and maybe 72. Tell us that on the form and we'll run you a new one. We can run many of them. It doesn't uh, take time as much at all. So if you decide to go with our new AT Architect, the com we're going to look at the blueprint and then also this new computer. This computer, we call it our tactical computer. We worked on it for the last three years. It has 100 years of historical market data in it and then every single day gets new data from around the world. 
it looks at momentum and trends and says, based on what the numbers are, the market is on a good trend, we can expect growth in the market. Or it could say, the numbers are looking shaky, I think that it's getting ready for a big drop, now might be a good time to pull out of the market. So every single day, this computer is getting data from around the world and telling us growth or pull back. So if you sign up for the architect, it will read that and say, based on what we know about Sue, her age would put her in moderate growth. But if the tactical model is saying that the market's really positive, the architect will automatically pull her up to either the growth or the aggressive growth during those good years. And if it gets a reading that the market is shaky and ready for a pullback, it could pull her out and move her all the way down to conservative to wait out that drop. So every single Monday, it is re-evaluating and moving you to the portfolio it thinks will get you the best return. It doesn't predict the market. It looks at momentum and trend, and if it starts a downhill climb, it would move you out. It's never going to move you before anything indicates. But the goal is to lose less money in the drops and get back in so you take part in those upswings. There is a fee to use the architect. The fee is 0.15% a year. It's less than what we were charging previously for just the models, um, but there is a fee. You can also start and stop the architect at any time. If it moves your money, it's going to send you an email or a text letting you know where it moves you. Here's an example of how it works. Joe is 45. His balance right now, a little over 24000 He signs up for the architect. And here's where his age allocation would put him. He would be in moderate growth for five years, then when he turned 50, he'd move to conservative growth, and then when he moved, turned 60, he'd move to conservative. No matter what the market is doing during this time, he stays where he is. He doesn't adjust to market changes. But look what the architect did during that same time frame. In the good years, moved him up. In years when we had market trouble, it pulled him out to the conservative. By not losing his balance during those down years, but yet getting back in to take part of the up, he, he benefited. The other feature of the architect is that it can split your balance, move that to more conservative, and keep your new money, your contributions more aggressive so that you're buying more, but protecting your balance. Um, so Joe, after this 20 years, was up 16%. So, the question I know a lot of people are asking, we're getting a lot of phone calls, how did it do? Now, we didn't have the architect until 2016, and so all of this data is backdated data, but now we've got a year under our belt, we've got some real numbers, and what we found was that the architect did work as we expected. We didn't have a big drop in the market. And so it didn't test that feature of pulling it out. And I guess I'm really glad for that because the market had a very positive year in 2016. Ever since August, the architect has had people one or two portfolios more than their age would indicate. And so everybody who was in the architect that was 30 or older did better in the architect than they would have in their age allocation alone because during these good years, it bumped them up so that they were in a more aggressive portfolio during the good years. People who were 20 year old during this last year in the architect did not see any benefit from being in the architect. The reason for that is because they were already aggressive and the architect couldn't make them any more aggressive, so they were in aggressive role already. But, the real value is that if it pulls you to a more conservative don't during those bad years, that's when they would see their value. The architect is an all-inclusive, you can sign up when you're 25 and not move it again because every single week the architect will automatically move you where it feels is the best place for you. Now we want to emphasize that any of these options are good. 
It all depends on what's best for you. If you are somebody who likes to pick and choose your own, who's going to be reading about the funds online, this is your best option. If you're somebody who likes to tell us which model, but then likes to have us do the underlying picking and choosing of the percentages, this is a good option for you. But if you know you're somebody who isn't going to pay attention to it, who is going to be happy if we're watching it for you and moving it automatically for you, then the architect is going to be your best option. So there isn't one best option, it's what type of an investor you are. Yeah. Just clarifying this last option, did you say that you split, if you do have gains during that time, do they split that, what you gain and put that in a more, do they keep some conservative and then take what you gain and invest in that, invest that in more? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and how that works is that there's a bucket for your balance and there's a bucket for new money coming in. And the question is, when does that new money become the old money? So if the market's going up, 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 and there's a drop, um, then when it starts to go up on the second drop, the new money becomes the old. So it goes from up and then starts to go down, then the new money becomes the old. So it's the second drop. So it's all time so that you're protecting your large lump sum but able to put your new money a little more aggressive. Um, so the architect, um, we've been very happy with it. It utilizes a market signal indicator system which emphasizes downside protection. New contributions and existing account balance can be invested differently to enhance performance. You do need to sign up for this. It won't happen automatically. We've got forms here if you'd like this. You can sign up and stop it at any time. It enhances returns and reduces risk. We will send you a text message or an email letting you know if it moved your money. It, like I said, it's been positive, positive since August. Even during the election time when I was hoping it was going to go more conservative, it didn't, which was the right move because the market just continued to grow right through that election. So very quickly, the website. How do you do these changes that we were talking about um, previously? If you have never been on the website, this is how you access your account. You go to American Trust Retirement. It'll ask you for a user ID. That will be your full Social Security number. It'll ask you for a password. That'll be the last four of your social. You'll click Participant Account. Log in, and then once you're in, it's going to make you set up a new user ID and password. If you've already done that piece, let's log in using our new user ID and password. The first screen you're going to come to is this screen. It's your dashboard. It's going to show your balance and then how much you're contributing. It'll break it down, pre-tax and Roth. Someone was telling me today that um, you know, she never heard of the Roth, was she doing Roth? You can check that online. Then to change it, underneath um, here it says change contribution rate. Click on change contribution rate. It'll bring up, first of all, your pre-tax screen. Go ahead, it says no change, stop contributing and change contribution. Click on change contribution. Then you can change this to whatever amount you want. Over here is this button where you can turn on and off that automatic increase. If you keep that on every year, it's going to increase 1% until you're at 8%. Click to Next. Now it's going to bring up your Roth page. And you can do the same thing. Change and change. And you can go to Next. And then it's going to bring up a confirm and submit. If this looks the way you expected it to look, go ahead and submit, and you'll get a confirmation number that it all went through. Stonehill know. This will automatically let them know. 
Um, I also I also wanted to talk about our statements because some of you may know that we went green in December of 2016 and we're no longer mailing the statements. They're all available online and you can even opt out to get those paper statements. But I think people didn't really realize it because suddenly this month we're getting a lot of calls where people are saying, you know, I haven't gotten my statement in a couple months. And we're like, yes, you're right. So in order to see your statements, this is, well, first of all, set up a notification. If you go up here in the upper right hand corner of your web screen, there is a gray gear. Click on that gray gear and it's going to bring up your personal information. Under personal information is email. You can put in a personal or a work email. Let us know which one it is, because if you keep this on none, it'll, it won't read it. You can also sign up for paper statements by changing this to no. So you can get the paper statements. Then when your statement's ready, we will send you an email saying, your statement's all set, log on and find it. And here's how you find it. On this front page, there's all these links. The very last one is for forms and reports. If you click on reports and scroll down, you'll see group report statements. Double click on here and all your statements will be stored right here. You'll just open them up and you can print them, you can see them, they're all right here. You can also make a statement of any time frame you want by putting in the dates you'd like and submitting that to get results. I reviewed your investments and set you up for early retirement. On your last day, you can leave at 4.30 instead of 5. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? I know this was a lot of information. Sue, anything to add? Yeah, I might just add a couple of comments. I wanted to clarify if anyone is contributing a fixed dollar amount. So for example, um, if you're not doing a percentage and you just have a flat $25 or $10 coming out per paycheck, that is not going to be escalated. Um, the system doesn't have the capability to convert that to a percentage and bump it up. So anyone on a fixed amount, the escalation is turned off. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and then just one other item we were going to mention, another plan change. If you are in a PRN status, effective July 1st, you will no longer be eligible to participate in the plan, but your account balance will remain there. And you do have all the same investment options available to you, so your account can stay and grow. And if you ever switch back to a regular status from the PRN, then you can pick right back up where you left off. So, any other questions? And Linda and I will both be here after the meeting now, so if anyone wants to meet with us then or even tomorrow. Tomorrow, they'll be here all day tomorrow and between the meetings as well. So if you want to meet with them in the education center here, they'll be available for you. Can they come during work hours? Can they get permission from their supervisor? Yep, as long as there's coverage on the floor and you talk to your supervisor, then that should, should not be a problem. All right, well, thank you so thank much you. for your attention. And everybody, make sure you sign